Well, in favor? Great. Uh, other than that, really have nothing else to report from the academic committee other than, uh, as far as we know, the exam is going okay. I haven't heard any problems yet. I don't know if anybody's had any complaints that they know of. I had a couple complaints about a bleeding question. A bleeding control, bleeding control question. That, um, I remember taking it too, but I remember getting it right because I knew what we probably were asking for. It came along the lines of, it was the tourniquet application question where it's basically you got somebody who's bleeding with a 10 inch laceration, it's still bleeding through addressing what do you do next. Mm -hmm. There's an option that I think that says apply more dressing mm -hmm. and then there's a tourniquet option and then there's an elevate option. Mm -hmm. I think we need to look to see whether that actually meets BLS standards or not because the correct answer by this was tourniquet. Mm -hmm. I think the actual answer probably should have been apply more dressing because the bandage, a pressure bandage would have come in next. On the protocol, yes. you just reviewed Here hit the hour. button. Huh? Here hit the button. Protocol button. Pressure dressing would have been nice. No, I think he's saying for the state. I think we, well, I'm right. I'm saying we might have a conflict as well. No, we don't because the new state applied DLS protocol is what is in our protocol. All right. I'd have to look at it. I didn't check. It, maybe not a protocol. Mm -hmm. Because um, to the best of my knowledge, nothing, hemostatic dressings and tummy kits aren't mentioned on the state website. Um, but we wrote our protocol in conjunction with the state so it would be the same. <coughs> so it should be fine. And if, and if there's a question, off. one of the paramedic providers that has just taken our protocol um, update should be answering using our protocol, not the right. protocol. But if the question's bad, we need to know and fix it. Stop trying to take a look at the thing. Find the thing. Yeah. It's being looked up right now. The, the oh. new New York State Department of Health protocol mm -hmm. is in there. It is. The, the turf it is in there. It is. Okay. I looked it up. Okay. Let's take a look at it. A month ago. Okay. Oh, sounds okay. Oh, that I have not heard of any problems. New check sheet for bleeding control. Gotcha. Do we have a statistics on how many people have taken the test? Yeah. Get to we give three times. We say apply a pressure dressing. Mm -hmm. Second one, apply a pressure dressing. Mm -hmm. Third one, apply additional dressings mm -hmm. and reapply pressure. So mm -hmm. three, three yeah. times we apply pressure. Okay. If severe bleeding persists, remove, expose, apply a hemostatic dressing, mm -hmm. uh, cover with a pressure bandage, mm -hmm. <laughs> more pressure bandages. <laughs> Um, if it's still bleeding, then you can use splints and pressure splints. And if it's still bleeding, you can use a tourniquet. In that case, we're going to look at the question. The question is that pressure five times before you use a tourniquet, <coughs> or just push really hard once. <laughs> yeah. So we got to deal with the question. Then I think the question is bad. Okay. Any statistics on how many people take the test? I don't. I don't have any statistics. Okay. Other than that, I have nothing else. Anybody else from the academic committee have anything else to bring up before we move on to the next committee? Okay, those are very short minutes for the academic committee. Okay, and we'll close. Um, the only other issue <coughs> we'll discuss at the, I guess, the end of the next meeting is our January meeting. I think statistically, we've more or less not had a January meeting, but. So if that's the case, we'll figure out time. Just one quick thing. I was just waiting for you to get here. Deb, do you want to? Debbie, we're just wrapping up academic. Did you want to talk about our see me the other day at? Uh, With a mouthful of. Uh, no, after you're finished. Uh, I was a waitress in the former life. Oh, there you go. Then go for it. All right, we did hold a uh, CME the other evening at Mohawk Ambulance Service. We had 10 people in attendance. It was uh, slated for three hours. It actually went about three hours and, uh, I don't know, 35 minutes? Six days. With questions. Anyway, uh, SUNY Cobleskill and Hudson Valley did a, sorry, ran up the stairs, a uh, combined <coughs> preceptor course in which we talked about clinical education and then um, each individual program and the paperwork that was required. Want to add? No, I, I think, yeah, perfect. I thought it surprised me because I expected that most people who would come to a three-hour CME for that would be hoping to get out in two. 
and instead we had people who were there actually holding us later. I don't think I left Mohawk until like 11.15 at night, and it was because people were holding us back asking questions, so it was actually really nice to see. So the intent is to uh, continue providing these um, as a joint venture, but to the region, not only to enhance the educational experience for our students, but also it seems that we identified a niche, which is that concept of clinical education, which is so different than what's provided standing up in front of a class lecturing or even what's done in the lab setting. So Debbie and I do weddings, bar mitzvahs, all us book us. We serve roles. There you go. <laughs> Actually, it would be a great thing to add to the next CLI update. Yep. So I'll just book you for that now. Um, on that topic, actually, um, the regional faculty course was held. Um, the people who were invited to the regional faculty course were notified and went. Um, how was it? It's good. Um, I was actually really surprised because there were only three people from Aaron's Mountain Lakes or Remo that were there. Yes, and you were representing all three regions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, it was myself, Dan Doherty, and uh, Doug Wildermuth from mm -hmm. our regions, and uh, it was it was good. I mean, it was what you would expect out of a uh, state course. That it was primarily, you know, concentrated on things as how to assist other agencies. So if you're coming in to help or audit or consult with an agency or training center that's having issues. You know, different ways to approach it is less punitive and more about how to you know build them up and make sure that they've got the proper resources and direction to go. So I thought the direction of the course was really good. Mm. Um, you know, obviously the state being uh, low on funding, you know, it used to be that you get paid to do certain things along those plays, or, or they pay for your education in the weekend, and they couldn't do that this time. So that's a little bit of a different twist on it, but. I think it's good that they had the course because it shocked me that there was only 28 people from the entire state mm -hmm. that were even invited. So I hope they do another one soon, but the big news out of it, which I think everybody here knows, is that Karen officially put in her resignation, mm -hmm. her retirement, <laughs> as of uh, the end of the year. So it'll be another state position that's open. For those of you that don't know who that is, it's Karen Meganhoff, and who's been head of the Bureau of EMSs <coughs> Um, education, official yeah. type education division? Associate Director for the Education Unit, I think. Um, we'll retired, so. um, Tim, uh, the council had asked you to follow up on, on that with a letter, didn't they? In fact, I contacted Karen the next day and got an order reply saying that she would send that information back to me regarding the people that weren't selected mm -hmm. once she got back to the office. Gotcha. Have not received it yet. Yeah, what, what I. What um, the council had asked him to follow up on was we put in how many names? I said 14. I think I, I, I counted them. I think it was about 10, actually. Mm -hmm. We submitted applications and resumes for an additional 10. Additional in addition to Howard and Dan, who uh, received it. So we put in a significant number of people for a region that really does an awful lot of coursework. And um, unfortunately, the people that we submitted didn't hear until after the course was done that they weren't selected to do the course, and we, after that, so, um, actually, we found out after the course was done, and when we found out, uh, the people who were involved had not heard yet, right? Correct. Disappointing in terms of their, uh, how, they, how they followed through on that, but that may also reflect how many people that they have in the Bureau. So maybe they just didn't have the administrative support. Uh, right. I think we're going to pass it on to you now. We're done. Pass it on to me. Um, I guess I have a couple of things from an academic perspective. Ketorilac, uh, PowerPoint you have now that Dr. Broder was nice enough to um, it's probably hiding in the back. He's back there. Um, the Dr. Broder um, was nice enough to help us with um, a, you'll see there's an agenda item on the REMAC minutes, but 
frankly, is more of an academic agenda item than anything else. The protocol update has been trimmed um, to reflect VLS changes um, and is available for anybody that wants to use it at a VLS level for training. Um, and Tim has one has that. And as soon as I can figure out how to work the right software, I will narrate the dental of, um, the dental reimplantation lecture, um, which is a collaborative effort between Jeremy Cushman and uh, Monroe Livingston and myself, and that will be up and available for everybody to use as well. two every time, we start at three every time. Um, what do we do with the academic committee when there's a lot on the agenda? Um, I think as we move into 2012, we should establish the schedule, stick with the schedule, and make it a little bit easier for people to adjust to. Um, if we have some healthy agenda items, we may end up having to run, run late, but I think that'll at least provide um, everybody an opportunity to work with their schedules a little better and try suddenly at the last minute to adjust and get your uh, earlier, and allow Don to adjust his sleep schedule and Dr. Funk to figure out child care, hopefully. So um, it gets kind of, kind of complicated. Um, but I think, uh, Don, if you and I were kind of, we can probably come up with a plan and get it out there. Um, everybody in the room right now, we've been doing um, Wednesdays forever. Um, if anybody has an interest in changing it to another day of the week, um, before we put out a schedule for 2012, um, shoot Tim or myself a note, and um, we can consider we can consider that. Um, to start into our business item, has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes from November? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Dr. Dufaller, seconded by Dr. Bosco, if he doesn't mind. All in favor? Thank you. Um, excuse members today, Dr. Martino, Funk, and Oshkow. Um, and we just spoke briefly about the new regional faculty appointments. This was in correspondence. Um, so Howard and Dan, um, excellent. As well as um, Doug Wildermuth, who does a significant amount of his teaching in this region. Even though he's from um, there's been a significant amount of correspondence from the DOH talking about BLSFR updates. If any of you are involved with BLSFR agencies, um, I believe the date of the drop dead date for them to get their um, update into the Department of Health if they want to maintain an agency number remains 1231, doesn't it? Yes, and uh, they'll be sending out another reminder to all those BLSFR okay. agencies also. Gotcha. So, for all of you involved with them or transferring <coughs> agencies, if you want to. Give a tickle to the BLSFRs you may work with. It's going to be their last chance to maintain an agency number. And for now, get reimbursement from the state for coursework for the participants. I would not anticipate that that's going to remain there forever. Um, but they're knocking out a significant portion of them. 
Um, there's some brief uh, medical direction discussion that we will do under, COVID, under uh, new business, um, and a request from Rich Byer Walters, um, who was hoping for a training program for BLS protocol updates, um, which I just talked about under academic, um, which is written and Tim has access to now to anybody. Um, BLS albuterol program, um, looks like BLS uh, albuterol, epi, and glucometers off the north side fire. Um, so thank you to north side fire. Um, and they also are doing that. Excellent. Um, we have on the new business a couple of um, medical director appointments. The first is Dr. Benick. Um, who I had the opportunity to speak with um, at length over the telephone, um, who is quite committed to uh, working with Copig. Um, his uh, CV is available for review if anybody would like to. He's the new medical director of the emergency department at Sharon Hospital um, and is planning on uh, being involved, although he was unable to come up here um, to the meeting today. Um, he has been involved in the uh, Hudson, um, Hudson Valley region and uh, has some involvement in, in the Sharon area. Um, and I make the recommendation that Copake make this change. Um, the change was a request from Dr. Chin, who is the uh, medical director of Copake, to transfer this responsibility to Dr. Benek as they've changed roles um, in their hospital. Um, may I have a <coughs> that recommendation? I'll second. Thank you, Don. All in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Good. All right. And the other is Northern Duchess who would like to divide their program and have a dedicated medical director for the uh, Remo area. Um, and that was Dr. Weisberg. And is this Dr. Weisberg who just walked in? Well, I chatted with on the phone but haven't had a chance to meet. Um, so, Mike, thank you for coming. I thank appreciate you for inviting it. me. Um, you want to just introduce yourself quickly to the group? So, sorry, to, sorry to put you on the spot. It's all right, no problem. My name is Mike Weisberg. I'm a ER doctor down at Columbia Memorial Hospital. I've been there for about four and a half years and I've been informally lecturing Northern Duchess and some of the medics down in that area for the last year or so. And they approached me a little while ago to join them as an official role. So. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank that. you for having me. Um, so, of course, I don't think there are going to be a lot of people that are going to want to vote against Dr. Weisberg with him in the room. <laughs> 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 um, but since I have never seen us actually vote against somebody who showed up, <laughs> I think the only time we voted down a medical director, they didn't show up. <laughs> thank you. Um, may I have a second for the. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Halpert. All in favor of Dr. Weisberg, I'm right. on board with it. Thank you very much. And welcome to the REMAC. Thank you. We are an inclusion, <laughs> inclusion body? No. <laughs> uh, we practice uh, non-exclusionary uh, meetings. Um, we do have to maintain a minimum for a quorum, but we welcome every medical director within the region um, to have an active seat on the, on the body. Thank you. So thank you. I will try. Um, Galway EMS uh, has presented us with a credentialing program. Um, it is um, taken pretty closely from Brian's program um, as he developed it um, and was presented here. The recommendation from staff was actually that we reject it. Um, but what I wanted to do was to, to bring and ask Todd a little bit about it um, and about the people who will be going through the process. It, it was actually taken directly word for word exactly from the sample that Dean forwarded us as the Remo's recommendation. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't understand, I guess is my I think we added one paragraph. Yeah, no, I think I think the biggest question that um, the <coughs> staff here had, um, and I recognized it because it was so familiar, um, is if you have a primary provider in Galway, and for those of you that don't know where Galway is, um, if you drive north and then west, and when the houses end, that's Galway. Um, <laughs> But it's an, it's an area with very few calls. You guys are doing, what, about 250, 300 calls a day? 300, 350, yeah. something like um, that. I think the biggest concern that staff had is you have a primary provider that's going online with you that isn't practicing anywhere else. They will never have an opportunity to gain any ALS experience. Um, do you have uh, providers like that, or are you mostly using providers from somewhere else? 
that are coming in and practicing there as well? There are some people who just work with us, but um, I think the vast majority of people have other jobs elsewhere and do part time. But yes, there are a certain number of people that I can't give you an exact number off the top of my head, but there are some people who just are going away to Gotcha. Um, if anybody wants to see the credentialing manual that they have, it's here, but um, for those that have been a member of the group for a while, you would recognize it. Um, it does not include a minimum number of calls. It does not include a minimum number of call types, um, which was something that we rejected because there will be a different number of calls for many, many different providers. Um, I think the important thing that we've developed over time is the idea that a patient, a provider is ready to go online when their medical director is comfortable with them going online. Um, and that really is the essence of this program that they call we have. Um, so I think the big question comes back to, to Todd. You've reviewed this? Yes, word and, for word. And you're happy with this, yep. would be my assumption. Um, so I would suggest that to the group, if anybody has any questions, please bring them forward now. My recommendation would be to accept Todd's credentialing program for Galway. Um, everybody in favor? Sure. Everybody opposed? Thank you. Do you, do you need a second? Is a second? Probably not because it was brought by Todd. Should we have a second? I don't think you need to. Who's, who's my Roberts expert in the room? I need a Roberts. It's got to be you and Tini. <laughs> this come from a committee? I think you're good. That, that's what I'm saying. I don't I think, think, I don't think you come from a committee. He's asking for uh, minutes two people. Yeah. Right. So yeah. This is actually no, something that's whatever. normally approved in in house. Yeah. Right. So, so probably, you, you, know, know, you don't, don't even know to cook. That's my point. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we record the Sergeant at Arms Patini has approved the process. <laughs> Um, what I'd like to do is let's go into some uh, brief old business, um, and then you've got to be kidding me. Wow. Okay. And then, and then adjourn until the three. Um, medical director appointments: Water Relief Fire, Dr. Di Martino, and North Greenbush Ambulance, Dr. Colomer. <coughs> um, both are graduates of the Albany Med Residency Program. Um, Dr. D. Martino is already working with Water Relief Fire, um, and I thought we passed her last time. Tim, yeah. you you did it in an acting capacity, but you didn't have a it, oh, we didn't it wasn't an official vote. Right. Yes. Okay, we didn't have a quorum. Um, so last month we voted without a quorum, um, but we would have had a second. But we'll re-second it this time. So moved. Thank you very much. Second for the. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. DiMartino, new medical director for Water Relief Fire. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Is there a second for the motion of Dr. Colomer as medical director for North Greenbush? Aye. Excellent. Dr. Vogel, all in favor? Aye. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, one of the items of business that has been a um, quite a uh, complicated one is filling the REMSCO position for an additional physician. Um, this is a uh, Monday night meeting um, on the fourth Monday of every month. Um, Dr. Wood was nice enough to hold that uh, position for us until his work has taken him away from it and will not allow us to do it. Dr. Jagoda, um, who is a medical director, works at Saratoga Hospital and is a medical director for agencies in Saratoga and works on Wednesday afternoons, who's unable to join us here, um, has offered to fill that role. Um, the last time I asked a group of uh, REMAC physicians whether or not they were interested in participating, they all stepped back together um, and everybody put their hands in their pockets. Um, is there anybody else that would like to fulfill this role on the regional EMS Council? With that said, is there someone who would like to second Dr. Jagoda as, thank you, Dr. Zuthal. All in favor of Dr. Jagoda being our new representative. Did he actually say he wanted it? Huh? Did he actually say he wanted it? No, he's not here, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, we have actually just voted him in with impunity. Yeah. <laughs> don't come get us on a Wednesday afternoon because he works. So we're all safe, except for me, because I'll see him on the fourth Monday every month. Um, 
protocol exams, CCT and EMTI um, protocol exams. Um, actually, should have been academic business. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we can reopen the academic meeting if you want. <laughs> um, but continue to require some work um, because we don't have a significant number of questions for them. Um, so we'll continue to require work. Um, luckily, we don't have a lot of CCTs or EMTIs in the region, but we still do need to produce those. Well, uh, that being offer. said, do we want to do the same thing we did last time, which is everybody on the committee submit a few questions? I think it would be better if we just hand them the paramedic questions <coughs> and we make the changes to what would make them appropriate to CCT and, we'll get to that, and injury. Yeah. Do you need to hand that out to Newt, or do you just have staff look at it and go, choose the CCT answers or choose the intermediate answers? talking about levels on the protocol, not rewriting a question, right? I, I think we should be able to do that for the most part. The, the intermediate questions will require a little bit more than the CCT. Great, Tim. Do we have staff that can do that? I just get it up. Dr. Dillard, I ah, believe you are. that <laughs> Sorry. there's a whole <laughs> data bank mm -hmm. of critical care and intermediate questions mm -hmm. that was taken from the paramedic questions and made into intermediate and critical care questions already. Okay. So that, I mean, that work should pretty much be done. So why is said, this even an agenda? Because it hasn't come back to, hasn't been put into an exam form. Okay. Can you work on getting it fixed and finalized in an exam form? Or is that an art job? Yes, yeah, it's an art. But it's a follow through from this office job. So can we get it done? I can certainly try. Excellent. We can try to get a hold of them again. Excellent. That's not that problem. Emphasize again. There are hundreds and hundreds of questions. No, I mean, the ones that were all sure. But those have to be old questions, though. So. What was the question there? Uh, that is essential. Yeah, I don't know. They were sent. They were sent. They were sent. They were sent. Yeah, all the way. All the way. So, all right, does that resolve that? That resolves that. The basic agenda items. Yes. There is. How many of you think that we have to does anybody have any other old business or new business? Dr. Bosco. I have a question about old business. I do have one piece of new business. Please. The old uh, Boston Lake, did yes. you skip that? We're doing that at three. I didn't know that this, I thought this was a combined meeting. It is a combined meeting, but because there were a group of representatives from Boston Lake that were interested in all coming to be here for that portion of the meeting, we're going to adjourn and read and read the meeting at memory. Memory. What? They didn't get the memo. They got the memo, but the because our agenda very frequently expands to fill time, mm -hmm. we chose to set a single time to make it most convenient to have our guests arrive. Okay. Well, I do have. I do actually. I'm just acting as the messenger, not speaking necessarily for myself. Uh, but I do I have. Wait to see where this is. Going. I do have a concern that I was asked to bring forward by the hospital mm -hmm. uh, relative to our Pixis at uh -oh. St. Peter's. Mm -hmm. um, we just had to repair it because the bioidentification on it was, uh, I I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but there's apparently some sort of a film that's on whatever the thumbprint reading issue is and that film was pulled off of there. And I know, you know, when you get new electronic stuff, you get a piece of plastic film and you're supposed to pull it off. But apparently this is not supposed to be pulled off. <laughs> All right? So that was a very large uh, repair bill that actually went into the ED budget, which didn't make a lot of nursing leadership happy. And, and the second issue that, that I was asked to bring regarding this is that the amount of equipment that is being, and supplies that are being utilized are not being adequately inventoried in the Pixis such that there are seemingly many more items going out than are being accounted for. And I think the message is that basically if this continues, that's going to stop. And so I don't have anything else to say. No, it's a good, it's a very good item to bring. And I'm glad you brought it to this group, um, particularly since there's a significant amount of leadership here from 
EMS agencies. Um, we will put out another. Did last week. Excellent. Yeah. Hopefully, it didn't happen between last week and this week. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was literally I was walking out the door and I was asked to yeah. bring this forward. And this damage at St. Peter's Pixis has not been an agenda item before at the nurses' mm -hmm. committee meeting. There this was, is the first that, that yeah. it was damaged, and, 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 and basically what they asked is if you have a problem, just go to somebody about it, as opposed to trying to fix it. You know? Yeah, there there has been a recurring theme um, on both of these. Um, there was a vandalized Pixis at Saratoga Hospital um, that has been addressed. Um, there, you know, now your Pixis has been vandalized. Ours has not been vandalized. Okay. You know, not whatever that is. Um, ours has not been vandalized, but certainly gets a significant amount of abuse. Um, and we will be going to a bio, bio ID system um, as long as um, we are all still restocking EMS agencies. From an EMS management perspective, I think it would be a disaster um, for us to lose. Absolutely us. agree. Um, and I think that's something we'll make sure is an agenda item for the nurses committee to know that we're working on it. Um, and we'll make sure that it to be very loud about the inventory in the Pixis. Um, I think everybody that has had, hey, everybody that has a Pixis or some type of restock has at some point seen more supplies moving out the door than they are seeing patients moving in the door. Um, and just con continually, you know, restating this to, to our providers and, you know, making sure that people recognize what we're going to lose. Um, it will be an operational mess if we lose the ability to restock our ambulances and get them back in service when they leave the hospital. So, Tim, anything to add? No. Thank you. We beat this. We beat it to death. And I'm not, <laughs> not quite. quite. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to, well, I'm not quite sure what else we can do, frankly. If anybody has any suggestions, let me know in terms that. of in terms of the bio thing, they're, they're garbage is what it boils down to. But for anybody else that's a medic in the room that's been there and tried to get supplies out of the one, particularly at St. Peter's, um, it's it's impossible to get that thing to recognize your fingerprint. And you go and you register the thing, you do it. It says that it's scanned. I can put my finger on that thing a hundred times and not get it to go. And then all of a sudden, it, t it takes it. So I think the the film removal thing was probably I'm I'm, I'm guessing was probably an honest. Yeah, mistake. I'm, I'm sure. It was. Like somebody saw it there and thought maybe their fingerprint wasn't getting read properly, so they're like, "Oh, that thing shouldn't be." Don't you have a punch in so that you can use too? That's that's what I'm going to say. Is is uh, my suggestion to the hospitals that are <coughs> that are looking at this kind of stuff is we use pin numbers for ATM cards. Why why do we need a bio thing to get a prep kit? It, it doesn't make any sense to me why we can't have a. That's a your pin only number. option to get into that machine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, well, that's not good because I mean mine doesn't work on ours at our hospital half the time. I would be very frustrated if I had yeah. no way to get in. So I mean, you know, I could I could see somebody in Saratoga. Which I don't know if theirs is bio or not, but I could see somebody in Saratoga having the same problem. Maybe you know it ends up quote unquote vandalized. I don't think say, <coughs> vandalism is probably a tough word there. I don't, no, I, don't I think it's a pretty accurate word in the one in Saratoga. Yeah, no, I'm saying St. Peter's though. I'm not sure. They, I'm not sure that it was. And if you guys are considering it at the med, you know, there's no. If you can enter in individual medics' thumbprints, fingerprints, whatever. You should be able to enter in a, a unique medic pin number. number. Uh, medic uh, number and a pin. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I'll have to check into it, but I think there's an, an alternative ability to get into it, but I don't know that for sure. It was not given to us as an option when we filled out those they forms. Who did you guys use the memorial to get into it? When they first chose to use the agency. You have numbers to punch in. It's like a memorial. But a memorial, a lot of this stuff is locked. Your angios and your, and your right. IV catheter stuff. Right. That's that is open the cabinet and take what you need. Yeah. You so, no, take what you use. Take what you use. Yes. 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 For the medics, as opposed to trying to have to punch in numbers and stuff. But if it's not working uh, well, then that's got to be looked at. There's, there's got to be a second. There's got to be an alternative to just that. So, so I'll certainly take that back to, to the hospital. 
Another part of the problem. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, I mean, that, 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 that bio thing is definitely an issue. I'll give you for direct um, points yeah, to talk to you. But another problem with that system no, is, no, is that nighttime, especially <coughs> after the, the three, four o'clock time range, when it's not working, you go to the nursing supervisor, hey, this thing isn't working, she can't make it work either. There's nobody after hours to say, hey, I can get you in, I can put in this, the secret code or I got the special thumb or whatever else it takes to get in. At night, there's no one there that can even restock it. And I've run into that problem several times down there, that the staff can't even get you in. Okay, so is it still Sherry who's dealing with the fixes or somebody else? It's less than Sherry. Less than Sherry. Yeah. If, I, I originally sat with them when they first put the committees together. If they're looking to just pick somebody to spring, just give my number and I'll sit back down with them again and hopefully we can get somewhere. But I, I don't think that they've seen the user end of it. Well, if, if you want to offer a call, Celeste, that would be sure. fine. Yeah. If she's coordinating the repair of the machine and all that stuff. If you're calling her Howard, I'm not. So I'm not, oh, okay. I'm not you're going to argue I won't either. Well, well see, I don't, want to, I don't want to bombard her because that's just going to piss her off. So uh, well, you, you want to contact her? Sure. Yeah. You want to contact her? Yeah, I'll call her. Do you have her direct line? Uh, I don't, but I can get through Betsy. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. That's now recorded for posterity, so if anybody's looking for <laughs> <that's laughs> <online. laughs> If anybody wants to contact us. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to keep calling over and over. So we can Sam back here next one. <laughs> She'll be the next meeting. That's right. Yes, and Sam won't. <laughs> All right. I think that actually raises a really important question, Tim, if we can make sure that it's an agenda item for the nurses' committee meetings. Um, we need to make sure that systems that are being put in place you know, work. Um, and we very frequently have lots of different people reinventing the wheel, and hopefully the nursing committee is taking some of that out of the way um, so we've got more efficient systems getting in place. Um, but do you have any security footage or anything that's going to help you guide? Oh, no, I, I, not, I not, not in terms of not looking to, doing anything other than following up with the agency so we can make sure to target intervention if we need to? I'd have to check with the chief of security. Uh, I mean, there's security <laughs> cameras all over the department and right. always, not in patient rooms. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if there's one in the EMS room or not. I'd have to check with security. No? If it isn't small. Yeah. <laughs> I know, probably broken by now. <laughs> probably broken. That's right. It had the film removed from it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it had the film put over <laughs> That's where the film is. <laughs> Perfect. Anybody else with new business? Uh oh, hands from the back. Dr. Vogel. Just Good news or bad news, Dr. Vogel? Well, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's very weird being the only hospital in the area that has no labor and delivery. Um, we actually have no OBGYN coverage, and it was recently decided that nobody with a positive pregnancy test will be admitted to the hospital for any reason because we have nobody that can consult on them if there is a problem. And I, we, we went through the whole viability thing, you know, that sort of thing, but you can't be admitted, you know, for an ankle fracture or a anything if you're pregnant so we this this has been the case for a long time that we don't have labor and delivery we are still getting people brought to us by EMS that are you know seven months pregnant that are having belly pain and we try and address this with the paramedics that if this is what the patient is requesting and they won't change their mind based on your you know explanation of the situation please call us we will talk to them um, so if the patient is needing to be admitted and is pregnant or is going to need fetal monitoring, they're not going to end up at our place in the end. You're going to waste another EMS trip getting them to another facility. So just so you guys are aware, we are trying to tell the paramedics what the situation is and encourage them to call us because we're more than happy to talk to the patient over the phone and avoid another trip across town taking another rig out of service. Because um, it's, you know, it's a lot of transfer paperwork and a lot of transfer phone calls on our part when we have to do that. And it doesn't do the patient any good. Yeah, that's certainly true. If you want to write a letter, we can certainly distribute it through here for you. Okay. Do you mean all likely is the best way to I mean positive or negative. The positive one 
can't be admitted. I don't care if they're two minutes pregnant, two weeks pregnant, it doesn't matter. They won't do it. I know. We tried. We tried the whole viable, non viable thing. No, they won't do it. Didn't a while ago, where Be we careful with the letter because it may end up no women of childbearing age being yeah. brought to the yeah. 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 A while ago, were we putting together a list of possible capabilities that would have been out? Yes, and the hospital found it impossible to actually come to the hospital. Is that what it is? That was not something that ended up being a client for us. There will be no more females going to the world. <laughs> you know, it's, it's weird because if you look at our tracking board at any given time, about 90% of our patients are female. Very no. <laughs> Anything else? Excellent. Let's adjourn. Come back together at 1500. Thank you.